you might as well call it gender trek at this point because the show is not so much about exploring stars and going on a journey to the stars it's about exploring gender and we're going to get into that in just a second if you're looking for an alternative to star trek if you're looking for something different something actually with a sense of wonder with an awesome world building with real plot with real characters that's not your typical corporate entertainment grab the stars entwined this is my novel series i'm a number one best-selling author if you guys are here for the first time and uh, I'm creating a trek of my own in some regard. And if you want to get into this universe, we got three books right here in a series that's going to be launching some awesome stuff in the future. It's a number one bestseller. Everybody loves it. Go check it out today. That link is in the description below. Thanks, everybody. All right. Star Trek Prodigy premiered last week, and this is a kid show. Uh, they are aiming it obviously at people who watch The Clone Wars. Disney had a huge success with that show uh, and then their subsequent spinoffs. And so Star Trek's trying to capture that as well. They premiered this on Nickelodeon and through their app. I think it's called Paramount Plus at this point. They've changed that, changed that a couple times. And it's basically about this purple kid right here who uh, is a prisoner and he's uh, trying to escape a prison. He stumbles across this Federation starship and uh, a bunch of prisoners kind of escape with him. So a uh, very simple plot. It was a, it was a 45-minute episode as a premiere. Uh, there's a bunch of background stuff with that. It's really interesting how they went. Uh, you really would not know it's Star Trek until you see the ship, which looks like a Star Trek ship, and until the very end, uh, in which I guess there will be spoilers if you care about that sort of thing. I don't know why you would, but uh, if you do, uh, there are. There's your minute to click off if you do. Uh, of uh, Catherine Janeway uh, from Voyager. She shows up as a hologram at the end, and the hologram is supposed to, like, train cadets or something like that. And it's really for, like, five seconds. The rest of it, it's a prison planet. They're on the run from droids that are firing phasers at them, just like it's the Clone Wars. The droids are all uh, unable to hit the broadside of a barn. Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of absurd. They actually screwed up visually, I think, on that level to where you just see them kind of firing at them almost point blank and they just can't hit them at all uh it's it's uh very very weirdly done in a couple levels like that um and uh it was it was pretty uninspiring overall uh you've got your kid of course and you've got this strong you've got your strong female lead along with him she's kind of manipulating him uh to try to get uh some information out of him about some other prisoner but where it goes down the sjw path and goes a little further and you, and you see already like there's no star trek aliens that you recognize from anything else before uh is they start lecturing you on gender and they use aliens to do this and this is a very sneaky way to do things in some ways but it's also very overt and they actually pause the episode i think three different times in the episode and that's that's what makes it something that you notice beyond just like one instance of this to actually have uh, a correction of gender. So uh, this happens with these two characters at the end over here. You see this like robot -y looking thing. It's like an energy being in, that's like constructed itself a robot shell. Pretty cool concept in general. But uh, this is what they do with that. Uh, when they start talking about this robot person, uh, they always go, you know, he blah, 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 blah. And then he stops him and he goes, actually, it's not a he or she, it's an energy being, and so it doesn't have a gender. They, they do that a couple times during the episode to just make it clear that this is a non-binary person. Uh, it's not, you know, just some strange alien or whatever. You have to, like, stop and, and be sure that you politically correctly refer to their pronouns correctly. Uh, and they do that uh, in order to indoctrinate children that this is a, a thing. Uh, and it's not a thing in real life. There is no such thing as a non-gendered person. It doesn't exist. Okay. Number two, you see the the thing, uh, which is what I'm going to call this here because it is obviously a ripoff of Marvel's The Thing. You see the orange rock monster th stuff right here. It starts out, uh, you know, with the thing. They, they, they don't have a universal translator in the mines where they're, you know, working as slave laborers, uh, as prisoners. Uh, so so the, the thing like goes growling and, and scary at first, but once they get to a universal translator, they stop the episode again, and uh, it's really a girl. 
and uh, and it stops and has a cutesy voice and sounds like a little girl. And uh, the guy actually stops and, and and corrects himself, and he's like, "Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I I couldn't imagine you were a girl. I'm so sorry." This is a this is a attempt to tell people that like even though it's a giant dude, uh, you know, uh, it might be a girl on the inside. It might be a little girl on the inside. You don't know, and so you shouldn't assume a gender up front. So that's what they did with this character also. So uh, two instances of that, and it happens multiple times during the episode where they correct the misgendering, and they're very clear. They like stop the timing of it is like this is an important thing uh, to this show, and it's just like ah, it's a train wreck. It's painful, um, and it's you know teaching kids things that are not realistic in life. So. I expect a little bit more of this. Uh, I I did find it interesting that like really the main character is uh, male. Uh, that's shocking to me uh, because they they're not allowed to do that anymore, from what I could tell. Uh, of course, it could swap in different episodes, and and uh, the strong female girl uh, who's better than everybody, of course, could uh, end up uh, being the lead at some point. But uh, yeah, the gender stuff was really what uh, what paused the episode. I gotta say that like the plot was very Star Wars. It just felt like Clone Wars. It didn't feel very Star Trekky at all. Uh, there's too many instances of uh, you know somebody should have plummeted to their doom for sure, uh, and then they fell and then they didn't die and or even get hurt. It was kind of bizarre in a couple of those spots. But uh, overall, this just doesn't feel like Star Trek. Um, and they really wanted to put that lecture in there, and they really wanted to conceal it in a way that like. You know, the kids aren't going to notice it. They're just going to get programmed by it. And that's what corporate entertainment does these days. All right. Uh, that's my review for now. Uh, it was uh, it was it was hard to get through this episode. Uh, it was it was long. Uh, it was a slog, even without uh, the gender elements of it. But that just threw it over the top to to make it something that is really irritating to watch. All right. Hit that like and subscribe button. And again, there's an alternative back the Stars Entwined, get it on Amazon today. Start your reading journey of real science fiction. Thanks, guys. We'll be back soon.